many rare incidents from the past that were photographed when they occurred. Looking at some of these photos will make you wonder how some of these events even happened. There we go! <laughs> Join us as we look at 20 rare historical photos. 20. The Vought Sikorsky VS-300 Igor Sikorsky designed the Vought Sikorsky VS-300, which is an American single-engine helicopter. Its original design included a single three-blade rotor powered by a 75-horsepower motor. On May 13, 1940, the VS-300 had its first free flight. It was recognized as the first American single-main rotor helicopter, lifting to a height of 15 to 20 feet and moving 200 feet forward before hovering, reversing, and successfully landing. The initial design, as well as subsequent improvements had a significant impact on the configuration of several characteristics seen in modern helicopters. The VS-300 was upgraded during a two-year period, including the removal of the two vertical tail rotors in 1941, when a new cyclic control system significantly improved flight performance. In 1943, the VS-300 was retired to the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. It has been on display there ever since, except for a voyage back to the Sikorsky Aircraft Plant for restoration in 1985. The VS-300 success and the lessons learned from its development paved the way for future advances in helicopter technology. Sikorsky's persistent labor and research resulted in more sophisticated and capable helicopters, which shaped the present rotorcraft industry. 19. Train wreck at Montparnasse Station This unusual event occurred on October 22, 1895, in Montparnasse. The driver of the express train from Granville to Paris, seeking to make up time for its 131 passengers, raised the train's speed and the air brake failed. Smashing through the track buffers, the express careered across the station concourse, smashed through the station wall, and crashed onto the street below, where it remained for four days, attracting throngs of curious observers. To make up for lost time, the train approached the station at a speed of 25 to 37 miles per hour, failing to engage the Westinghouse air brake. Without sufficient brakes, the train's momentum pushed it slowly into the buffers, and the engine crossed the nearly 98-foot-wide station concourse, slamming through a 24-inch thick wall before plunging 33 feet to the Place de Rennes, where it stood on its nose. In total, a woman in the street below was killed by falling masonry, while two passengers, a firefighter, two guards, and a passerby were injured. In our thumbnail, we can see a train wreck like the Montparnasse wreck, except this train seems to have derailed. But according to experts, it fell from a roof, if that's even possible. 18. Penny Farthing Cycling In the history of bicycles, the penny farthing stands tall, or rather stands tall and rides even higher. The penny farthing, with its characteristic form featuring a comically enormous front wheel and a minuscule rear wheel, transports us back to the bygone age of the 19th century. The penny farthing, called after the British penny and farthing coins, which were comparable in size, made its grand appearance on the cycling stage in the 1870s. When the wheel hit pebbles and ruts, especially when braking hard, the rider may have been thrown forward off the bicycle head first. Headers were rather prevalent and posed a serious, perhaps fatal, threat. Riders coasting down slopes frequently removed their feet from the pedals and positioned them over the tops of the handlebars, causing them to fall feet first rather than head first. The penny farthing became obsolete in the late 1880s with the introduction of contemporary bicycles, which gave comparable speed via a chain-driven gear system and comfort using pneumatic tires. 17. Lunch atop a skyscraper. Lunch atop a skyscraper is a black and white photograph taken on September 20th, 1932, depicting 11 iron workers sitting on a steel beam 850 feet above the ground while constructing the RCA building in Manhattan, New York City. The men were accustomed to walking along the girders. It was planned as a marketing ploy to promote the building. The shot is sometimes misattributed to Lewis Hine. However, the identity of the original photographer is unclear. Evidence suggested that Charles C. Ebbets may have taken it, but it was later discovered discovered that other photographers were present at the shoot. Many assertions have been made about the identities of the guys in the image, but only a handful have been definitively confirmed. 16. The Stockholm Telephone Tower The miracle gadget known as the telephone was conceived in the late 19th century, yet engineers were unable to grasp the simple concept of underground telephone cables. Because of technical restrictions in the early phone lines, each telephone had its own physical connection strung between a home or company and a phone exchange, where the call was manually connected by a live operator. With so many individual lines, expensive and unattractive towers 
were built to carry hundreds to thousands of phone lines through the air. In Stockholm, Sweden, the major telephone exchange was the Telefon Tornet, a massive tower built in 1890 to connect approximately 5,000 lines that stretched across the city. Simply looking at these old images reveals the ridiculousness and danger of the entire operation, particularly during the winter months. Everything that might have gone wrong did. From severe winds to ice storms and fires, the network was completely exposed to the elements. Fortunately, phone networks advanced so quickly that by 1913, the Telefon Tornet had been totally phased out in favor of simpler technology. The remaining shell served as a landmark until it caught fire in 1953 and was demolished. 15. Curling Through Time Curling originated in medieval Scotland, where it was played on ice locks with stones and brooms. Over time, regulations became institutionalized, transforming a casual hobby into a structured sport. In 1838, the Grand Caledonian Curling Club developed unified rules, creating the framework for today's game. The term curling first appeared in literature in 1620 in Perth, Scotland, in the preface and lines of a poem by Henry Adamson. In Scotland and Scottish settled territories, such as southern New Zealand, the sport was and continues to be known as the Roaring Game, due to the sound the stones create while passing over the pebble which are droplets of water applied to the playing surface. The sport was frequently played on frozen rivers, although purpose-built ponds were later constructed in many Scottish cities. Outdoor curling was particularly popular in Scotland between the 16th and 19th century because the climate afforded adequate ice conditions throughout the winter. Today, the sport is well established in Canada, where it was introduced by Scottish immigrants. The Royal Montreal Curling Club, the oldest active sports club in North America, was founded in 1807. The first curling club in the United States was founded in 1830, and the sport was brought to Switzerland and Sweden before the end of the 19th century, both by Scots. 14. Elephant as War Workers During World War I, most horses and mules in Britain were employed to help the war effort. In total, 1.2 million horses were drafted and deployed to the Western Front. Many farmers and traders were forced to locate alternate beasts of burden, none more unusual than elephants. The elephants were utilized for a variety of purposes, but they mostly replaced horses. Their primary responsibilities were to transport guns, munitions, and various machines. Furthermore, elephants could carry significantly more weight than horses. Circus elephants were hired to help plow fields, stack hay, and transport ammunition and other goods throughout cities. Additionally, elephants were used for non-combat purposes throughout World War II, particularly because the animals could do chores in areas that were difficult for motor vehicles. While the use of elephants during the First and Second World Wars is not well documented, there is enough data to show how and where they were deployed. However, there is no accurate estimate of how many elephants were slain to aid the military effort. 13. Superb Royal Family With almost 30 grandchildren growing up in palaces across the continent, Queen Victoria recognized the value of dynastic marital ties in expanding royal influence. Following the Napoleonic Wars, British foreign policy sought to establish a balance of power in Europe. No country should ever become powerful enough to unleash such destruction on the continent again. In the mid-19th century, Prince Albert and Queen Victoria thought that dynastic marriages between their nine offspring and European royalty would provide further protection. Each marriage was a type of soft power, a way to disseminate British liberal ideas across the continent, while also potentially countering the destabilizing elements of republicanism, revolution, and war. Prince Albert saw the process prospect of a federal Europe, in which a group of strong, independent countries, each with its own constitutional monarchy, could be brought together by shared goals and interests. 12. Prettiest Legs Contest The Pretty Ankle Contest debuted in the early 1900s as a particular show inside women's beauty competitions. Contestants would have to stand behind a curtain to conceal their bodies, with just their legs covered in heavy stockings and shoes on their feet. The hiding was intended to persuade hesitant ladies to participate in the event. The judge, who was usually a police officer or a clerk, would stroll up and down judging the nicest ankles, as seen in the photos in this article. Some pageants also awarded the nicest shoulders, arms, and legs. These displays were frequently used as promotional opportunities for hosiery firms, with victors receiving free stockings from event sponsors, as well as fame and the title of loveliest ankle. Ankles were considered desirable as early as the 18th century, with one lonely heart advertisement in the 1770s noting shapely ankle preferred, an unusual request for the time. However, they did not gain popularity as fashionable, provocative, and titillating items until women's hemlines began to climb in the early 20th century. After World War II, with much more on display, consider the swinging hemlines of the 1960s, ankle judging events fell out of favor. However, the fixation with the segmentation of women's bodies continues.
11. The Race for Space Electronic calculators had not yet been invented when NASA and the space race were in full swing. This meant that everything had to be done manually, including all the calculations required to send a man to the moon. Because of the scale of the calculations that needed to be performed, NASA headquarters required gigantic chalkboards where engineers would utilize ladders to write at the highest spots. Can you imagine working out intricate mathematics that could lead to a rocket disaster while riding on a chalkboard? These photographs were taken in 1961, the same year that NASA launched a man to the moon. While these photographs were most likely produced for Life magazine back then, they show the size required to solve such complex engineering problems. After all the physics had been worked out, every line of code required to control the shuttle was loaded onto a computer with 64 kilobytes of RAM that ran at 0 0.043 megahertz. That's point tetra zero 64 gigabytes of storage. When you compare it to what your phone can store today, you can get a sense of how remarkable the moon landing was. In this case, new technology simplifies these hard calculations. Everything these engineers were working on this massive chalkboard could most certainly be reduced to a simple computer program today. The world certainly has changed. 10. Artistic Nazi Heritage The Monuments Men's narrative is one of the most remarkable examples of valor and sacrifice in the history of art preservation. During World War II, these heroic men and women risked their lives to preserve numerous valuable works of art from the Nazis. With their unflinching commitment to the cause, they left an unmistakable mark on the world of art and culture, guaranteeing that future generations may access the masterpieces of the past. These photographs capture the essence of a time when the destiny of the world's cultural riches was uncertain. The Monuments Men were tasked with locating and recovering more than 5 million culturally significant items, including paintings, sculptures, manuscripts, and musical instruments. Despite the immensity of the challenge, they persevered, crisscrossing war-torn Europe on a mission to preserve Western civilization's treasures. 9. Determined Bride These stunning, colorized photographs depict joy among the devastation of the Blitz during World War II. Angelina Carpunina's intriguing, colorized photo gallery includes a bride leaving her London home on her wedding day in November 1940, shortly after it was attacked. Miss Ina Squire Brown, a professional dancer, has been photographed in color for the first time, emerging from her bombed house with her father while a loved one waves from the front room. Another scene shows a woman taking a break from work and drinking tea on a pile of wreckage left by a damaged building. Meanwhile, a third photograph shows another wartime bride, Martha Coogan, clambering over rubble in a London church before marrying her serving military husband, Tom Dowling. These photographs are unbelievable, and they show how well humans can adapt to any challenge when they have no other choice. 8. Early Days of Washing Machines It is claimed that the washing machine did more to liberate women in the 20th century than the pill, the right to work, or the right to vote. Before the invention of the washing machine, laundry was frequently done in a community setting. Wash houses, also known as lavoirs in French, were built in villages around Europe that could afford them. Water was diverted from a stream or spring and fed into a structure, potentially only a roof with no walls. These wash houses often included two basins, one for washing and one for rinsing, through which water was constantly running, as well as a stone lip inclined toward the water, against which wet laundry might be pounded. Women were responsible for doing all their family's laundry. Washerwomen took in others' washing and charged per item. As a result, washrooms became an essential stop in many women's weekly routines, serving as a form of institution or gathering spot. It was a women-only area where they could discuss concerns or just talk. The earliest English patent for washing machines was issued in 1691. An illustration of an early washing machine appears in the January 1752 issue of The Gentleman's Magazine, a British newspaper. The Industrial Revolution drastically changed laundry technology. In 1940, 60% of the 25 million wired houses in the United States had an electric washing machine. Many of these machines included a power ringer, although built-in spin dryers were not rare. Today, more than 80% of families in the United States own a washing machine, while ownership rates are even higher in Germany, Russia, Spain, the United Kingdom, Canada, Italy, Japan, and Turkey. 7. Coca-Cola Trucks Coca-Cola was invented by John Stith Pemberton in Atlanta, Georgia, in the late 1800s as a temperance drink and patent medicine. In 1888, Pemberton sold Coca-Cola's ownership rights to Asa Griggs Candler, a businessman whose marketing strategies propelled Coca-Cola to global soft drink domination in the 20th and 21st centuries. Coca-Cola's distribution network was ahead of its time. Coca-Cola trucks traveled all over the world, from the United States to Argentina, Spain, Egypt, New Zealand, 
Scotland and England, as evidenced by the photographs. Coca-Cola trucks were used as part of the company's advertising strategy to raise brand awareness all over the globe. As a result, by the end of the 1920s, the widely consumed sweet soda had gained global recognition. According to the Coca-Cola website, one of the oldest vehicle models was the Rapid Truck, built by the Rapid Motor Vehicle Company in Michigan. This model was functioning in Tennessee as early as the first decade of the 20th century. By the middle of the century, the corporation had begun to standardize the appearance of its delivery trucks. For a while, they were all yellow, although the hue clearly altered over time and varied from place to place. But one thing never changed, the logo, which was etched in Spencerian style. The font selection was made more than a century ago, in 1923. It was also plastered on delivery trucks. After a century of this approach, it's no surprise that we all remember the company logo. 6. Teens Killing Time The Roaring Twenties were a period of rebellion and liberty for young people around the world. Despite the social constraints of the Victorian era, young people went to co-ed clubs for evenings of wine, jazz, and the shaking of their buttocks. New dances like the Charleston were so provocative that they were barred from many of the era's dance venues. In protest, the coolest flappers and sheiks felt it would be a lot of fun to stick it to the man and get as many people on the dance floor as possible. The competitions ranged from last couple standing marathons to activities meant to show how many couples could be on the dance floor at the same time. Over the next few decades, the basic cramming premise evolved. Instead of gathering a crowd for a specific feat, the goal became to jam as many bodies as possible into a given location. In the 1950s, cramming evolved from a fad to a full-fledged sport. The Cole Broas Circus introduced the relatively new concept of a clown vehicle, which served as the foundation for early cramming competitions. Sororities and fraternities across the country competed to see how many bodies they could fit into the smallest cars of the day. It was just teenagers finding a way to kill time. 5. Honoring the War Animals Human troops are not the only ones who battled for their nation. Millions of horses and other animals served during the war, and one remarkable photograph demonstrates how much their human counterparts valued the war horses and their sacrifice. The artwork depicts approximately 650 men, standing in a pattern that, from above, resembles a cavalry horse's head, neck, and bridle, a fitting homage to the numerous horses who fought and frequently died by their side during the Great War. While horses had served in many earlier conflicts, the number of horses slain in World War I was enormous, about 8 million horses, as well as countless mules and donkeys, perished in the conflict. The United States Army and the British Army both used mounted infantry, although Germany stopped deploying them to the Western Front early in the conflict. The horses lived in deplorable conditions and were frequently slaughtered on the front lines by machine gun fire and chemical assaults. Horses and their counterparts also assisted in transporting food, water, ammunition, gas masks, and medical supplies to Allied forces on the front lines via supply wagons over great distances and tough terrain. Their bravery inspired Michael Morpurgo's book War Horse, which was later transformed into the film of the same name, directed by Steven Spielberg. 4. Charles Lindbergh's Voyage Flight In 1927, a new era in human flight began. In an era when flying was still in its infancy, Charles Lindbergh dared to dream of and accomplish what even the most daring pilots had long sought. Setting off from Roosevelt Field in New York, his world's first solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean to Paris was more than just a physical voyage. It was also a tribute to humanity's never-ending search for advancement. This bold undertaking, carried out against the backdrop of a culture enthralled by the possibility of flying, catapulted Lindbergh into the global spotlight and vaulted him to the ranks of aviation legends. 3. Paris Flood In the winter of 1909 and 1910, Paris and the surrounding area had above-average rainfall, which saturated the land and caused rivers to flood. Parisians were absorbed with daily life in January 1910, and they had been lulled into a false feeling of security by the Seine's rising and falling floods in December. As a result, they generally ignored reports of mudslides and flooding occurring upstream. They were also sluggish to detect warning indications within the city, as the Seine's water level climbed 8 meters above average. The water began to flow faster than usual, and significant volumes of debris surfaced. By late January, the Seine River had flooded Paris as water pushed upwards from overflowing sewers and subway tunnels, then seeped into basements through fully saturated soil and from the backed-up sewer system, causing damage to the basements of several buildings, making the 1910 Great Flood of Paris a catastrophe. 2. Rainy Bethia Last Public Execution An estimated 15,000 to 20,000 people attended what would be the last public execution in the United States. Rainy Bethia was taken to the gallows in Owensboro, Kentucky, around 5.20 a.m. on August 14, 1936, after robbing, raping, and murdering Lycia Edwards, a 70-year-old lady. 
Bethia was black and Edwards was white. He admitted to committing the atrocities, but was only charged with rape. Unlike a murder conviction, which might result in a maximum punishment of death by electrocution at the state penitentiary, a rape conviction permitted the accused to be publicly hanged in the county where the crime happened. 1. Automatic Dishwasher There are numerous modern conveniences that we take for granted. Some of them are so common that it's difficult to remember a time when they did not exist. The dishwasher, for example, is an equipment that transforms the home by eliminating a time-consuming task. While it was not popularized until the 1970s, the invention has been around for more than a century. The first commercially viable dishwasher was invented in 1886. Josephine Cochran, an American lady, devised this version when her husband died, leaving her with no income and a huge amount of debt. Her machine had wire chambers designed to hold plates, cups, and saucers, and these racks were mounted inside a wheel housed inside a copper boiler. Rather than using a hand crank, Cochrane's version used a motor to rotate the wheel. Meanwhile, hot soapy water was sprayed from the boiler, which then ran down the dishes. When Cochrane displayed her dishwasher at the World's Columbian Exposition in 1893, she finally found a market for her innovation. She sought potential consumers in the form of restaurants and motels. These establishments could afford the price of her items and were seeking for ways to reduce manpower. Some of these photos, especially the ones showing people going through their daily lives during World War II as if everything was normal, were mind-boggling. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thanks for watching and see you next time.